Good afternoon, everyone. So, our lesson for today will be about urologic infections, uh, commonly encountered during your practice and throughout your medical career. So, the first of the uh, infections that is common is what you call cystitis. Cystitis is usually presented as new onset urinary frequency urgency, and dysuria. So patients may also report lower back pain, suprapubic pain, foul-smelling urine, or gross hematuria. So urinalysis with microscopy assists with diagnosis by confirming the presence of pyuria, hematuria, and bacteriuria. So complicated cystitis may arise in the setting of a structural or functional urinary tract abnormalities, recent tract instrumentation, recent antimicrobial use, immunosuppressed states, pregnancy, or hospital-acquired in infection. Urinalysis with microscopy assists with diagnosis by confirming the presence of pyuria, hematuria, or bacteriuria. Office dipstick may be helpful as the presence of nitrites reflects bacterial colonization and the presence of leukocyte esterase reflects pyuria. Risk factors for the development of uncomplicated cystitis include female gender, sexual activity, and use of spermicides. Symptoms may be similar to uncomplicated cystitis but can progress to pyelonephritis if left untreated. That's why elderly or very young patients tend to exhibit lethargy, change in mental status, or anorexia, which may confound the diagnosis of urinary tract infection. Patients may require hospitalization if febri febrile or if with symptoms that are severe. The treatment would be three days of antibiotics, which are generally sufficient for uncomplicated cystitis. Fluoroquinolones from metoprinsulpametoxazole are well to tolerated and are easily available. Nitrofurantoin, which is also commonly used for uncomplicated cystitis, requires at least five days of treatment. Men with uncomplicated cystitis should undergo seven days of treatment. The treatment consists of 10 to 14 days of antibiotics, fluoroquinolones, or trimethoprine sulpamethoxaxol are usually administered based on culture results and or bacteriograms for complicated cystitis. Asymptomatic bacteriuria does not require treatment unless it's detected during pregnancy or if urinary tract instrumentation is planned. So uh, having a laboratory with a UTI without symptoms, you don't need to treat unless the patient is pregnant. So here are the, the treatment regimens for acute cystitis. As you can see, uh, the different uh, drugs, the nitrofurantone, sulfram, Metox trimetoprin sulpamethoxazole, phosphomycin, and uh, ciprofloxacines, arquinolones, and levofloxacine. So you could also give uh, uh, amoxicillin for pregnant patients, or cephalexine, or nitrofurantoin. The next type of infection is an infection which is called pyelonephritis. It arises when a bladder infection ascends proximally along the ureters to the renal parenchyma. It may also result from hematogenous spread such as in the case of intravenous drug users or in patients with bacteremia or with bacteria from other sources. Patients with pyelonephritis may present with fevers, 
plank pain, nausea, vomiting, and lower urinary tract symptoms. The physical exam may reveal tenderness of the costovertebral angle. Patients may appear toxic with poor oral intake with evaluation, uh, laboratory showing leukocytosis with elevated neutrophils. Urinalysis demonstrates the presence of pyuria and bacteria and urine culture should be sent prior to starting broad-spectrum antibiotics. Imaging is also important and it should be considered to rule out any signs of obstruction, which could prolong the recovery period despite appropriate antimicrobial treatment. So here is a picture of a, uh, an ultrasound image showing pyelonephritis, which re demonstrates renal enlargement, hypoechoic parenchyma, and compressed central collecting complex. And here's another one, uh, another imaging of a CT scan of a patient with XGP or a Santo granulomatous pyelonephritis. This is uh, usually a pyelonephritis complicated with a stone, which you can see here in this figure. And it's also obstructed, which causes a hydronephrosis of the kidney. Acute pyelonephritis requires at least 10 to 14 days of antibiotic therapy. Mild or moderate cases, even if febrile, can safely be treated as an outpatient with oral antibiotics. Fluoroquinolones and trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole are ideal for treating pyelonephritis. Nitrofurantoin should be not should not be used as it should be it should it does not penetrate renal parenchyma. Patients with concern for sepsis or irritability or inability to tolerate uh, oral intake may require hospitalization for an IV antibiotics while awaiting the culture results. Fevers may persist up to 72 hours despite appropriate treatment. The presence of persistent fevers or symptoms after this period warrants cross-sectional imaging to rule out or renal or perinephric abscess. Treatment or for renal or perinephric abscess usually consists of percutaneous drainage and broad-spectrum IV antibiotics. So here is a... Uh, an algorithm when a patient comes in with the symptoms and signs of pyelonephritis, fever, a triad of fever, flank pain, and leukocytosis without sepsis. Uh, however, with nausea or vomiting, you could do the following urine culture, radiologic evaluation, and treatment of 7 to 10 days of fluoroquinolones. If, if with improvement within 72 hours, you could shift it to oral and urine culture four days on and 10 days of uh, prescription. However, if the patient develops sepsis, radiologic evaluation is necessary to rule out obstruction and the number of days of treatment will be prolonged to 14 to 21 days. This consists of ampicillin plus gentamicin, fluoroquinolones or third generation cephalosporin. However, if there's no improvement, um, we will need to review the, the imaging and probably put a drain to address the obstruction or drain the abscess. The next common infection is acute prostatitis. So it is marked by fever, suprapubic or perineal pain, and new onset lower urinary tract symptoms. So namely with dysuria, Frequency, urgency, changes in stream and caliber, or difficulty in emptying the bladder. It is most often caused by urinary pathogens and can be diagnosed using digital rectal exam. How revealing tenderness and soft prostate, soft or doughy prostate. The bladder drainage with a foley or suprapubic tube may be required if urinary retention is present. The treatment for this is a long course uh, antibiotics which could last up to six weeks. If not treated, however, in a timely fashion, 
acute prostatitis can develop severe sepsis or prostatic abscess. Prostatic abscesses may require drainage by a transurethral approach or transrectal needle aspiration of the abscess. There's another uh, entity regarding prostatitis which is called chronic prostatitis. It may be bacterial or abacterial. Symptoms in both cases include perineal, suprapubic, or penile pain, along with urinary frequency, urgency, or change in stream caliber. Men, men, men may also report pain in the groin, lower back, or testes. Fever is, however, not observed in chronic prostatitis, and onset may be over months already. Patients with chronic bacterial prostatitis may also report recurrent UTIs with cultures exhibiting the same bacteria. Differentiation between two etiologies requires culture of expressed prostatic secretion to compress to confirm the presence or absence of bacteria. Treatment of chronic bacterial prostatitis includes long-term antibiotics and alpha blockers to relieve the symptoms. So here is the, the two glass uh, test wherein you need to do a rectal exam and massage the prostate to get the specimen. So this is the pre-massage specimen wherein you, you need to check the urine of the patient and post-massage you need to check also the, the urine of the patient. And if there is a prostatic secretion, there could be another uh, glass, which is called a three glass test, STEMI T glass test, which is not uh, mentioned here. So, chronic bacterial prostatitis is also known as chronic pelvic pain syndrome. Symptoms are similar to chronic bacterial prostatitis, but generally do not respond well to long term antibiotics for, for treatment. It is generally somewhat more difficult to achieve symptomatic relief when treating chronic pelvic pain syndrome. And options include alpha blockers, NSAIDs, neuromodulators, and pelvic floor physical therapy. The next infection is epididymoarchitis. You would uh, encounter this commonly in your practice, in general practice. Epididymitis refers to the inflammation of the epididymis. In most cases, a bacterial infection, the testis is also affected. Thus, it encompasses the name of epididymoarchitis. The common etiologies include sexually transmitted infection, especially in younger males, or urinary tract infection, which is more commonly in older males. Other possible etiologies include underlying congenital urologic anomaly or incomplete bladder emptying. Symptoms include pain and swelling of the epididymis and testes. Some men may report nausea or vomiting, which arises as a result of irritation of the spermatic cord. Urinary tract symptoms may be present, but absence of symptoms does not rule out bacterial epididymoarchitis. So physical exam generally reveals a tender, swollen epididymis and testes. Scrotal skin erythema or reactive hydrocele may be present as well. A complete blood count should be performed to rule out leukocytosis and urinalysis with urine culture should be collected prior to initiation of antibiotics. Urethral swab should be performed if sexually transmitted infection is possible etiology. The clinical presentation of testicular torsion can be quite similar to that of epididymoarchitis. It may be quite difficult to clinically differentiate the two entities, but one should keep in mind that the onset of torsion tends to be slightly more acute within 4 to 8 hours than the epididymoarchitis, which gen generally arises over the course of 24 to 48 hours. Scrotal ultrasound can assist in diagnosis However, in cases of severe orchitis, testicular flow can be compromised, which may raise concern for torsion. Scrotal exploration should be considered in any equivocal case. A missed torsion can result in testicular loss, 
secondary to necrosis. The treatment for epididymoarchitis consists of single dose of cetriaxone and azithromycin if there is concern for sexually transmitted infection, as well as, as, well as 14 days of oral antibiotic therapy, NSAIDs, and scrotal support. If the patient exhibits fever or toxic presentation, hospitalization with IV antibiotics may be required. The next infection is balanitis or balanopostitis. Balanitis refers to the inflammation of the glands penis. Balano, balanopostitis arises when the foreskin is also involved. Common etiologies include fungal infection, bacterial infection, contact dermatitis, or local trauma. The exam reveals a diffusely erythematous and warm glands penis with inner prepuchial erythema as well as balanopostitis is present. Treatment includes appropriate hygiene, topical antibiotics, or antifungals, and occasionally topical steroids. If there is an inappropriate response to treatment, the differential diagnosis should include malignancy, psoriasis, or infectious agents such as human papillomavirus.